Okay, um, I have not actually had the time to do a proper video on this, even one showing my own ugly mug. So you can now look at my ferret while I share my thoughts on the infamous OGL. Uh, my thoughts are fairly simple. This new thing sucks, and even if they roll it all back and they never ever roll anything like it out again and they forget the money grab, the damage has been done. The damage has irrevocably been done. And um, it's been done even if you think, oh, it's not affecting my game because uh, I'm not um, a third, third party creator. That does not matter. Um, this genre, this whole role playing thing, and I've been in it since 86, where I was basically, well, I was the only one in my little town, uh, trying to get my friends to play Merp, which I had taught myself because I thought Tolkien was cool. I still think that. But anyway, this whole genre has always grown on creativity and on the creativity of many people. It's called fantasy, for fuck's sake. It's the more people are creative, the better. And the more the genre grows and the more the big brands sell. Because the more stuff that comes out for their rule sets, etc., um, the more they get mentioned, the more popular they will be and the more they will earn. But apparently Hasbro has not understood that. I'm not surprised. It's a bit like Bethesda and Fallout 76. But, I mean, a, a, a big greedy corporation comes in and fucks up a game. Um, yeah, he's cute, isn't he? So no matter what, the damage to uh, Wizards of the Coast has been done. And it's much, much worse than it was with uh, D&D 4. It's, it, it sucks, because... They're trying to stifle creativity and any any brand that tries to stifle the creativity that this whole role-playing thing is fed by and runs on. They're screwed. They aren't screwed because they're the biggest. But they've peaked. They have peaked. I don't think they can come back from this. Not to the same level. They can, they can still survive. And they make in the short term they may make Hasbro some money and then Hasbro can sell it off and make money on that but the entire wave that D&D 5e has sort of been riding on it's definitely culminated it's one of the things that made 5e so big was critical role there's no doubt just Go in, look at the stats of sales of 5e, and look when Critical Role started. Um, of course, it might be like, um, what is it? Uh, somebody's movies and uh, death in, in pools. But Critical Role and Brennan's show and Stranger Things, they have definitely fed this 5e. And it's made 5e so dominant, it's made... D&D dominant, it's made Wizard of the Coast dominant, but now they've shot themselves in the foot by killing that exact creativity that has made them popular. It, it's fucking, it, it, it's so stupid. It's almost as stupid as invading Ukraine, but uh, without any other comparisons being made. But it's, yeah, I, I, words fail me for how stupid it is. I'm Everybody's going to flee to other systems and D&D &D will have a bad rep and the creativity surrounding it will be gone while this creativity will search to other brands. Um, Pathfinder will no doubt grow and um, what's it called? Paizo? Paizo? I play Rollmaster, so how would I know? I also play 5e because it's a good gateway drug for my students to get them into tabletop role-playing. It's fun. Heroism, dramatic, and fairly... It's not actually that simple to learn any longer. In my opinion, Role Master is simpler these days. But still, it's fun and it's heroic and it's a good gateway drug to get them into tabletop role-playing. Um, 
I'm, I'm probably going to change and so are many others. Anyway, that, that was my thoughts. N never, never kill creativity. Never kill creativity in a role playing because it will kill yourself. We thrive on creativity. Yep, from a rainy Denmark and a happy ferret. Have a nice day and enjoy your new role playing system, whatever it might be. But just go away from D&D. &D.